Okay. You like my little hooky setup? <laughs> Why? Because this stupid program I'm using is like, oh, I could do that. Okay, not really. And the program I spent a hundred bucks for way, way back, back when I was updating my copy of Paint Shop Pro, same story. Won't do it. And the other program this ah. Oh, Oh, I could go for weeks complaining about how Windows 10 destroys everything and everything. It might even not be Windows 10. I don't know. You see, this is hard. This is ugly and dear. Okay. Anyway, I wanted to talk about um, Nancy Vickers from Dead Still. And if you don't know who she is, I'm going to put her out right now so as I figure out where I'm at. This chick right here. Follow the cross. See, they see her. See her. She's so pretty. She's so annoying. She's so obnoxious. Breathe, breathe. Dead Still. If you don't know what Dead Still is, it's this quite little macabre show discussed uh, with the main character of this gentleman right here, who is a macabre photographer during the Victorian Victorian era. It's a rather interesting practice they had back in the old days. Uh, photographs wasn't like it was for us. And so you would have someone die, and this is your last chance to get their photograph and have them. And so you would hire these macabre photographers who'd come and do their art to create these lifelike uh, still, still images with the corpse and take photos of them, corpse photography. I've seen some quite little sad ones. I saw one with a little girl. She had all her dolls around her. It was very sad. Uh, but it's still an interesting practice. They had a lot of um, practices that we would consider macabre. Pretty interesting stuff, though. And uh, so that's his job. And she is his niece and currently living was living with him and his assistant. Now, whenever I talk about these shows, I'm probably going to talk about character development the most. Because that's what interests me. That's what keeps me in a show is character development. I like to watch things go. I think part of what killed me with uh, Once Upon a Time, which is a show I was really enjoying, Rubble Stiltskin was my man! And then he had some excellent character development. And then this thing happened with this writer and a pen and boom, it was like all of his character development was undone. And I just never could care about the show as much ever since. Character development for me is a big, big deal because we develop as people through life. We change a tweet we said 10 years ago, we probably would never say now. And when it comes to characters, although if you did to the in-depth that real life people did, you it would just be incredibly boring. To some degree, it's just really entertainment. It's good writing, good entertainment. It shows that you care. Moving along. So with Nancy Vickers, I'm going to discuss her character a lot. She annoys the crap out of me, and that's a good thing, and here is why. This is what we're going to talk about. Yay! Nancy Vickers. Her backstory. She comes from a rather well-to-do family. You know, her mother is a snot, you know, and uh, she's naive in a lot of things. She has this idealistic, childlike view of the real world, for example. Uh, she was going to help look for somebody in the more poor sector of town, and so she got dressed up like a horse so she could fit in. And then she dressed up as the wrong kind of whore. Totally beefed up her accent and pissed off at least one person. We were very insulted by this. That's her idealistic childlike view. And it would be quaint and it would be cute and it would be funny if she weren't also annoying because she's incredibly annoying. Uh, she's bossy. Okay, fine. There are bossy people on bossy. Okay, fine. Uh, you know, I'm going to move my hooky picture over because it's kind of annoying me. There we go. That, that, that's better. So I was, I was getting cut off and I've been cut off so much in life. I just couldn't do no more. Uh, she's, she's bossy. She's what, what people want to consider a strong character, but really she just comes off as whiny and spoiled. And, uh, cause you know, there is strong and then there's whiny and spoiled. And, uh, but what drives me crazy about her is that she's hypocritical. Oh my gosh, she's hypocritical. It's okay for her to keep stuff about her private life secret, but it's not okay for him to have a private life and have things that he's not comfortable talking about with himself, you know, 
And so she, at the end of the last season, the way it ended with her hypocrisy and the way things happened, and can't even be grateful that he did some really, really deep emotional things to save her life. <laughs> Blaming him for the trouble when really it wasn't him. I mean, I admit if he had talked about some of his secrets, perhaps things wouldn't have turned out how they did. But on the other hand, when he explains why he does what he does, they're actually pretty good reasons considering the situation. Um, but she doesn't care. She's just this brat. Uh, and, and she really annoyed me. And I was, uh, so that's her character. And I was reading some, uh, comments on the, uh, I can't remember if it was IMDb or whatever reviews about her and everybody, people don't like her. I mean, I could certainly do without her. And yeah, I, I really could. And, the, and people were saying, oh no, there's absolutely no Victorian woman whatsoever that would be like that. She's completely un unrealistic. And I really hated her and agreed with that until I had a mental uh, crash. No, that's not true. So character development wise, she has actually done quite well. Her actress portrays her well. Now I've described her. I went through it. Okay. Now I'm going to explain why, even though I have nothing but er uh, about her, this is a good thing. Chief number reason one, and you're going to hear me say this more often if I ever make the you know, more videos of this. If a character elicits an emotional reaction out of your audience, and it doesn't have to be, oh, I love them. Although you do want your, your audience to love the characters. The fact that I'm getting an emotional reaction out of the character and not the actress is a good thing. I think the actress is doing, is doing a fine job. I just think I just really hate the character. This is a good thing. Well written, well played, well done. Now I'm going to close this. Okay, so we don't need this no more. The reason why she's well written and actually is kind of accurate is because of this lovely lady who at her prime was considered the beauty of the world. She was considered the most beauteous woman in the world. She was very proud of her dark locks. Do you see the resemblance between her and Nancy? Let me, let me give you a painting of her a painting that she apparently got upset about because she was painting with brown highlights. You're looking at Lola Montez, um, a real life Victorian lady. Uh, Lola Montez wasn't her real name. I always, you know, even though I published a book about her with uh, the award winning Dove Silverman, the Duchess of Lansfeld, and I'll explain why she's the Duchess of Lansfeld. Uh, I just can't seem to remember her name. She's Lola. She called herself Lola Montez because she claimed to be Spanish royalty that had been deposed and lost her home. This was, of course, her show persona, as she had explained once, whether or not she did it to get attention or it really was her show persona and her character. You have to ask her and hope she tells you the truth. Uh, but she was bossy. She was, she was, um, she had a naive view sometimes. She got into a lot of trouble on occasion. And honest to God, I kid you not, according to the histories that I have read and Dov Silverman and others, she slept her way into becoming a duchess. Yeah. She was given that title after becoming, uh, well, a certain nobleman's lover. Uh, so you're saying, you know, people that are saying that Nancy is inaccurate and inaccurate portrayal uh, for the sake of being PC, one person said, this is not true. Uh, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that Nancy, the character, was definitely, definitely, definitely inspired from, from Lola herself. Uh, maybe this is a coincidence, but it looks like the writers who would, who would need to know the material to write a period piece like this, uh, knew what they were doing when it comes to Lola. There is a lot about Lola and Nancy that they share. Both Lola was considered herself an actress and a little bit of a lewd dancer. Nancy wants to be, aspires to be an actress. Lola came from a pretty well-to-do family. Nancy comes from the well-to-do family. Lola has a, has a, uh, very forward and what they would have called back then mannish personality. Lola had a very forward and mannish personality. Uh, Nancy's actions are going to be getting in her trouble someday. Lola got into trouble someday. 
Of course, that's true with everybody. <laughs> yeah. We all make stupid decisions, me included. Uh, yeah. We all make mistakes. Um, <laughs> I could quite, I could think of quite a few mistakes. All of them, I wonder what I saw in them. Uh, yeah. And so I'm actually giving the writers kudos on this, that they did such a good job. And yeah, but Nancy still annoys the hell out of me. And it makes, it does make me wonder if Lola would annoy the hell out of me. Uh, we don't have video of how, or audio of how Lola behaved if she spoke the way that Nancy spoke. We don't know. Uh, we just have a bunch of articles and there'll be like one person praising her and then another person, um, well, being slanderous, so to speak. I mean, you know, cause she, you either loved her or you hated her. Uh, this was, was Lola, not, not Nancy. Uh, so we don't know if the actress is doing a good job of that. Possibly, um, possibly. Your guess is as good as mine. I think that the actress is doing an excellent job. But that is why Nancy is a freaking annoying character, and I won't miss her if they get rid of her. In the least, I won't miss her. But this is a good thing. This is a really good thing. Now, with Apocalypse News, because you know, Apocalypse News, Akashic's about to pick back up again, and that's a phone call I'm going to deny. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Uh, Akashic's picking back up again soon, so stay tuned. Um, I really didn't want to clutter this video with that, but give me your thoughts on how you, I mean, are there characters that annoy the hell out of you and, and, and you realize that, hey, this is actually a good thing. It's supposed to be that way. Uh, I'm game if you're game. Now I just got to figure out how to shut this new program off. Ha, ha, ha. Good times.